MWM Fund, who the heck are we? What are we doing? Do we have a team behind us? Find out on this episode of Impact and Income. Welcome back to Impact and Income. Today, I kind of want to dive into you know, the impact space, the Reg A Plus Fund, and the Money with Meaning Fund. What are we actually doing? How do we choose what to invest in? Touch on maybe the transparency and the technology that we're using. How liquid is your money? Stuff along those lines. All very, very important. If I'm an investor, I want to know how liquid my investment is, which we'll go over, um, and how we actually structured this fund because when we scale, it can't just be both of us. So what we've been doing behind the scenes for the last 12 months has been strategically partnering with people that are better than us. Yeah. People that have been in this space for a while, that uh, their missions align with our mission, okay? And so they're able to lend not only, uh, you know, an advisor type of, uh, you know, situation to us in, in how we actually choose the assets to invest in, but also opportunity, efficiency, and how we actually manage risk is extremely important in this type of environment. I think we kind of want to start with, you know, why did we choose a Regulation A Plus fund? Why did we not do a, a non-for-profit fund, a 503C? Why do we go with the Reg A Plus? And to start with, um, our mission is to do good, and we could obviously do do a lot of good with uh, not-for-profit. One of the issues that not-for-profits run into is they're always having to raise more money, always the cash burn. You have to raise more funds, more funds, more funds. With the Regulation A+, Plus, it seems to be a little bit easier to bring in capital because you're actually providing a return. You can still do good, but you're providing a return. Yeah, I, I think the biggest problem with that model of a 501c3, which they're fantastic and we have partnered up with a lot of non-for-profits and they're definitely needed, but a lot of the people that I've been talking to in the non-for-profit space, they're really starting to realize, my neighbor for instance, is wow, we're not able to get any money. We're not able to attract the type of resources and talent that we need to further our mission. If you add a financial piece to it, let's say we all need to make money, right? So how are you gonna hire somebody that has a bunch of offers from a bunch of different people, right? If you're not gonna be able to pay them. Blue chip executives are tough to come by and um, non-for-profits, they're under a lot of scrutiny right now. In the Regulation A plus space, you're a for-profit company that you're, you know, and for instance, the Money With Meaning Fund, we align a mission of saving 10,000 people's homes and uh, pair it up with we're trying to achieve maximum financial returns. So when you put those two together, you get the same sense of a 503C, of a, of a non-for-profit, but when you add that financial component, that's what has allowed us to impact people's lives, but also start attracting um, quality talent. The kind of talent that can help us move this mission to the masses is what we're trying to do. 10,000 families homes on the macro is small, but for us, that's a lot. And so the big thing is, is you know, what are we looking at when we're actually seeing these opportunities? Where do they come from? You know, um, the big thing is, is we're an opportunistic fund, and we're a fund that looks at already structured offerings, right? So what we do is we have they call them tapes, and they're simply just Excel spreadsheets of these non-performing assets that we buy from bigger institutions, right? And then what we do is we run those down and kind of say, this is what we invest in, and this is what we don't do. Now, what we've added now is an asset management piece as a strategic partner that's been doing this for 25 years that helps us manage that risk by putting in what our outcomes want to be, mm -hmm. meaning we want to maximize the, the, the social benefit and we want to maximize profit at a certain yield. How do these assets look compared to the other ones? Right. We've basically laid out our filters on what we're looking for when we go to buy an asset and we're buying non-performing debt. Um, our mission, as we said, is to save 10,000 people's homes. So it wouldn't make much sense to buy vacant houses, right? Yeah. So one of the filters we obviously lay over is we want to buy an occupied house. We also want to tap into government funds that are available in states that were affected by the, the meltdown. Um, there was a fund set up called the Hardest Hit Fund by the Fed and they sent aside $9 billion to distribute to the states to help keep people in their houses. So those are that's another filter that we lay over the top of our buying criteria. And we give this to our asset managers to say, here, this is what we're looking for. We want owner-occupied. 
We want it to fall within, you know, a hardest hit fund state. So we have the opportunity to recoup some money from, you know, that's been put out there to keep borrowers in their homes. And we let them go run and they'll bring us opportunities to buy. Yeah, and, and the big thing is to accelerate the growth of our mission to accelerate the uh, the fund to a really good substantial level to where we're actually making some big impact you have to leverage other people and that's why we brought in people like NS Capital that have been doing this for 25 plus years they're not only going to provide us a lot of opportunity because they deal directly with HUD so we'll be getting influx of, of deals directly from um, HUD retrades um, which is really really good inventory and a lot of people can be affected that way um, and we can leverage their their experience in the space. You know, it's if we're going to be doing 10,000 families homes like we started off by saying, we can't do it by ourselves. We have the mind, the vision, the strategy. Now we need to drive that strategy, right? And how do you best do that is you give that to somebody that that's all that they do. So what we're trying to instill to people here is that it's just not us doing this. We have a big partnerships of non-for-profit housing counselors. We have asset managers out there. We have an entire uh, legal team out there. We have a lot of, we have professional servicers that third party service this stuff. It's not just us doing this. And that's what we've been doing for the last 12 months, 12 months is building the infrastructure right. in order to take money from investors and exceed their expectations. Right. Another thing we've done is, you know, we're very sensitive to the liquidity. A lot of investors are, are worried about liquidity within the space. And we have a sister company that we developed that is a trading platform that allows us to distribute these mortgage assets or these mortgage notes directly to the public in a fast, efficient way. It's done online. Um, we've seen a lot of people with solo 401ks, self-directed IRAs coming in and buying up our end product, which is a reperforming loan. Yep. We're able to put this out um, through paper stack. You know, we have a, a best efforts clause to liquidate assets um, if you request your money back within 30 days, which is kind of unheard of in the space. Yeah, and, and you know, I wanna also get across that we're not the pioneers here of this. There's a comparable fund called AHP Fund, which you can look into. George Newberry runs it, and he did unbelievably great with this fund. That's who we looked at and said, you know what, what a great way to structure it. And that's one of the big factors of why we choose that Reg A+. Plus, is if you guys want to go and look at a comparable, when you buy a house, what do you do? If it's an investment house, you go look at a comparable and see if you're getting right. a good deal. If you're going to invest in MWM fund, we're not the first of, our, of its kind. We're, we're kind of like the second and third, right? So you can go out and look at AHP Fund and what they've done, and they've been extremely successful where they've actually started to wind down the fund now. I think they've saved, or in the process of saving over 2,500 per people's homes. I think they have 1,100 investors that have gone, gotten behind their mission. So you can really look into them and that we've kind of structured our fund around that same concept. I know we've covered a lot today about, you know, how we structured our fund with the Regulation A Plus Fund. Our team and how expansive it is we have such a team it is what is really driving us to make quality investments uh, allow us to scale our efforts to save more people's homes if you want to learn more jump over to mwmfund.com check out what we're doing let's have our conversation and see how we can work together to make an impact and an income